The Cutting of My Long Hair Written by Zip Kalasa The first day in the land of apples was a bitter cold one, for the snow still covered the ground and the trees were bare. A large bell rang for breakfast, its loud metallic voice crashing through the belfry overhead and into our sensitive ears. The annoying clatter of shoes on bare floors gave us no peace. The constant clash of harsh noises with an undercurrent of many voices murmuring an unknown tongue made a bedlam within which I was securely tied. And though my spirit tore itself in struggling for its lost freedom, all was useless. A pale-faced woman with white hair came up after us. We were placed in a line of girls who were marching into the dining room. These were Indian girls in stiff shoes and closely clinging dresses. The small girls wore sleeved aprons and shingled hair. As I walked noiselessly into my soft moccasins, I felt like sinking to the floor, for my blanket had been stripped from my shoulders. I looked hard at the Indian girls who seemed not to care that they were even more immodestly dressed than I in their tightly fitting clothes. While we marched in, the boys entered at an opposite door. I watched for the three young braves who came in our party. I spied them in the rear ranks looking as uncomfortable as I felt. A small bell was stabbed and each of the pupils drew a chair from under the table. Supposing this act meant they were to be seated, I pulled out mine and at once slipped into it from one side. But when I turned my head, I saw that I was the only one seated and all the rest at our table remained standing. Just as I began to rise, looking shyly around to see how chairs were to be used, a second bell was sounded. All were seated at last and I had to crawl back into my chair again. I heard a man's voice at one end of the hall and I looked around to see him. But all the others hung their heads over their plates. As I glanced at the long chain of tables, I caught the eyes of a pale-faced woman upon me. Immediately, I dropped my eyes, wondering why I was so keenly watched by the strange woman. The man ceased his mutterings and then a third bell was stabbed. Everyone picked up his knife and fork and began eating. I began crying instead, for by this time I was afraid to venture anything more. But this eating by formula was not the hardest trial in that first day. Late in the morning, my friend Judwin gave me a terrible warning. Judwin knew a few words of English, and she had overheard the pale-faced woman talk about cutting our long heavy hair. Our mothers had taught us that only unskilled warriors who were captured had their hair shingled by the enemy. Among our people, short hair was worn by mourners and shingled hair by cowards. We discussed our fate some moments and when Judwin said, we have to submit because they are strong, I rebelled. No, I will not submit. I will struggle first, I answered. I watched my chance and when no one noticed, I disappeared. I crept up the stairs as quietly as I could in my squeaking shoes. My moccasins had been exchanged for shoes. Along the hall I passed without knowing whither I was going. Turning aside to an open door, I found a large room with three white beds in it. The windows were covered with dark green curtains which made the room very dim. Thankful that no one was there, I directed my steps toward the corner farthest from the door. On my hands and knees, I crawled under the bed and huddled myself in the dark corner. From my hiding place, I peered out, shuddering with fear whenever I heard footsteps nearby. Though in the hall loud voices were calling my name and I knew that even Judwin was searching for me, 
I did not open my mouth to answer. Then the steps were quickened and the voices became excited. The sounds came nearer and nearer. Women and girls entered the room. I held my breath and watched them open closet doors and peep behind large trunks. Someone threw up the curtains and the room was filled with sudden light. What caused them to stoop and look under the bed, I do not know. I remember being dragged out, though I resisted by kicking and scratching wildly. In spite of myself, I was carried downstairs and tied fast in a chair. I cried aloud, shaking my head all the while, until I felt the cold blades of the scissors against my neck and heard them gnaw off one of my thick braids. Then I lost my spirit. Since the day I was taken from my mother, I had suffered extreme indignities. People had stared at me. I had been tossed about in the air like a wooden puppet. And now? My long hair was shingled like a coward's. In my anguish, I moaned for my mother, but no one came to comfort me. Not a soul reasoned quietly with me, as my own mother used to do, for now I was only one of many little animals driven by a herder.